Hello, welcome to another Rets Pro video. This video is going to cover the three default templates that are created upon activating our plugin. The WPR admin folder was created upon the activation of our plugin. You double click on that, you're going to see a template folder. Double click on that, you're going to see a template folder named something other than default, hopefully, if you followed the instructions of our other videos. Now inside this template, we actually have a handful of files that are just the default files. Those files are known as the advanced search. This is a custom HTML responsive uh, search form that I use. And of course you can name it whatever you want and select it. And that's in the other video on how to build advanced search forms. But that is the, the template file that is currently set up for this particular website. And by default, if you are hiring us to set up a starter website, this will always be the default template file. Um, the next file that we would be using would be the search results right here. Search results is usually the most common thing everybody jumps right on and they need to start uh, editing with is so that they can get the proper fields matched up. And we're going to cover that once we pop that one open. The third and final default template file is called the listingdetail.php file. Now that is the quick one, two, three overview of where these three d default files are. And now I'm just going to talk about a couple of things before I jump out of here. The auto-suggest form, auto-suggest result that's on the home page, that's where those files are. The agent details, agent roster, if you're building a broker website and you need to edit the agent details, agent roster. Same thing for the office. We also have the office uh, roster, office details. Uh, those templates are here as well. Totally customizable, anything that you want to do. Now, the only other place in here that you will have templates that you need to be aware of are right here in this folder right here called SC underscore templates. SC stands for short code. So short code templates are located right in here. Uh, all of the templates in the short code builder when, you, when you're in the WYSIWYG editor embedding featured listings on your page, these are the files that, will, that are ultimately displayed in the drop list of template options. If you add 100 more template files in here, all of them are automatically displayed in that drop list in the short code builder. So I just want to uh, touch on that real quick. All right, so those are the template files that you need to be aware of right here in the short code and down below here. Aside from that, if you do a map, uh, if you're using the map module or any of the other modules, there will be modules in here. Uh, map search, I'm just going to go ahead and pop over here. And this is where I'm working with doing some custom uh, HTML on some of this map stuff. But this is where the, the map templates are. Uh, is, and there's, depending on what the other uh, modules that you do add, that's where some of their templates would be is in, this, in the module folder here. All right, so that's a, just a real quick on that, where they are. And again, as you can see here, this is the, the path. Your root directory is going to be WPR admin, template, and then your template name. Okay, so enough of that. Let me jump over here. This is the first of the three default templates. This is the search engine underscore ADV.php file rendering this particular layout. This is responsive. That's why I use it. It's got uh, all the features I wanted for this particular build out. And uh, the next template search results this is where your search results uh, template would be displayed the way it would look and uh, and I'm going to jump in here and talk about one more file here I just want to show you then you got your listing details so those are the three templates that are must have uh, knowledge of where, where they are so that you can edit those now the next thing I want to talk about really quickly is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit page right here on this I just want to talk about where the CSS and the and the, the JavaScripts and all of that stuff happen, and how do you get all that stuff to to dial it in and have no conflicts with whatever project that you're working with and theme that you're working with? All right, so here is the WYSIWYG editor, you know, the regular old WYSIWYG editor of WordPress, and down below here is where the WPR custom head and footer code options are. 
this is really cool, really handy, uh, just because if you have any conflicts, you can go in here and edit them. You know, if like for example, on the other project, we were using a uh, common jQuery uh, file, and I just needed to delete it from mine. So you know, just get the reference of it out of mine, so it was really easy to fix. This uh, particular website has all this information here. I just want to show you how do you get this information in here. Well, what you do is you come up here and you look for the tag that's in this, listing details. You come down here and you would select the corresponding tag right here, listing details. Now, you'll see that when I switch to something else, such as search page, etc., this will continually change. Uh, registers only got the CSS. So depending on what tag that you're selecting, all of this information pop is populated. Where does this information come from? Is it possible for you to edit? Yes. And let me show you where that is. Back into your template file folder, you're going to actually come down to the very, very bottom, and it's called WPR Meta. I'm going to go ahead and open that one real quickly. All right, as you can see here, we have, and this is actually using PHP, uh, just partial. And what we have is a list with, you know, we're just basically dynamically formulating a path so that when you drop select, it already knows what the template directory name that you have selected is, you know, in fold or whatever custom name that you've selected. And then it automatically fills in the rest of the information. Yes, you can modify this to whatever custom project and then save it and you're good to go. All right, so that is going to cover the... Um, where the files are and the next thing I want to go ahead I've got some of these files open I might as well go ahead and talk about this while I have it opened up here and that is the template tags okay so the best ex example of template tags and the best example of conditionals is going to be in the search results.php file and what I want to show you here, let me just go ahead and get this to fit inside our window a little better here. What I want to show you here is the listing fields. So basically, if you have any fields that are not showing up, you need to match the template uh, field name. So if you called yours uh, total square feet, you know, total SQFT, instead of SQFT heated like I have here, then it's not going to work until you change that field. Same thing for bass total, same thing for beds total, same thing for uh, just about you know everything that you see in here. Conditionals. What are conditionals? This is a great example if I can just get one here. Okay, so I highlighted this one right here for us. And it says if listing field equals beds total then basically, in other words, if there is a value for beds total, then we're going to display this HTML right here, which is going to actually be as shown here. So we have the beds and baths icons. So basically that's what I've got here. I've got this little span class, you know, this info room, and then I have one for info bath these are little css elements that are going to just show the little icon for me is what that is and so basically if there is, if i was looking at here's a great a great example if i'm looking at uh, commercial land or vacant uh, land and lots we don't have the beds and baths fields sitting there empty Okay, that's what the conditionals allow us to do. Now, on the website, in Rets Pro, in the forums, uh, there's some examples, but also in our wiki, we have some other additional examples of how you can use the conditionals to do all kinds of things. There's some great examples on some of our portfolio websites where you can take a look at that as well. All right, so this is what we do if we want to do a if something, we use these conditionals. And if it matches this, then do that. Or if there is no match for any value, then do something else. Lots of lots of options, uh, pretty unlimited. All right, so that's a little bit about that part. Now, I do also want to talk about 
on the listing details page, we'll just go ahead and click on this one. Okay, so on this particular listing, I do want to talk about the listing details. Uh, just a little bit about this. Now, the listing details template, I'm going to jump back over here, click on the listing details template, and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so here is the listing details template. And again, now I am running a little PHP title string so that I can force this to be, because some of the realtors are just a little uh, enthusiastic about their typing and they like to make it all caps, for example. And it makes for an ugly website when you allow that to be displayed that way. So I ran a little PHP string on that. But as you can see, again, we are using the tags so whatever tag you want to display, you just have to put it in there like that into your listing details template or any template that we have, and it's going to automatically display that. Now, if you expect something to be showing up and it's not showing up, then you need to verify that you have actually got the correct field name and it matches what you mapped in your database. All right, so a little bit about that. Now, you'll see here we have for example, property details. I'm going to show you over here where that is. This is it right here. That is all that's in here. We have a uh, H3 class. We give the title, you know, for we have a little CSS styling right here for the, the H3 property uh, details, uh, background color, etc. And we only have a tag here called headline. And we'll check our video called Listing Field Zone Editor. Listing Zone Editor. Okay. And that's going to be an explanation of how that tag actually works and how you actually get your data to be displayed within that tag. Really cool. So it's a, about a seven minute video, so it won't take you long to watch that one. But I do want to explain something else uh, for design. This information, anything that we do where it's going to be dynamically generated, such as this, I made absolute sure that you're going to be able to style this information that's, that's generated here. And this is how it's done. You're actually going to see that the UL uh, called headline it's automatically, whatever you generated the tag name to be, is automatically going to be an ID, as you see right here. So we have the UL uh, ID equals headline, because that's what we have given the tag name. It happens dynamically. And then every single field that is displayed in this uh, parent ID is a class, so you have a parent ID and a class element, and now you can assign uh, the CSS so that the MLS only under this ID is going to be font 20 and purple, if you want it to be, <laughs> whatever you want. All of this information is dynamically generated, all right? Okay, well, that's going to pretty much wrap it up for this video. I think you should be able to get it from here. Uh, you know, I do want to point out one last thing in this particular listing details template. A little cool thing I did was I created the ability in the listing details template. Let me just maximize this. To be able to put a widget area, how did I do that? Well, I went into the widget. To this particular theme allows you to create unlimited sidebar widgets. And so I did that, and, and I just want to show you what I did to my template. I made my template lay out in the info theme that I'm using here. As you can see here, I am actually using the infold HTML, the infold theme. This is this actual WordPress theme that I'm using. It's called infold. So I took the infold HTML ripped it out of the, the theme, dropped it into my own template and created so that my uh, architecture here will actually follow the architecture of the master theme that I have stuck this code in. That's very important. And there's a about a 15, 20 minute video that you can watch that goes into a lot of detail on how do you take an existing HTML uh, element from another website and bring it into your website and put our template file tags into that to make it all work out. Anyway, 
this particular uh, video, I just wanted to show you that last little thing, which is this sidebar right here. So basically, I added this little PHP snippet dynamic sidebar. Now, what you can do is you could literally copy this into any anything, and that's what uh, this is from WordPress. All you have to do is match up what your widget name is that you decided to name it, and then if it exists, boom, it will be displayed. So you could put one in the top like I did right there. If I wanted to add another one down below so you know I could have one somewhere and another widget somewhere else that allows the people that are using the website right here I'm going to show you to, to create widget boxes and, and then maintain that information quickly from right here as you can see we're using a uh, plugin called profile widget ninja really handy it gives it gives the uh, agents uh, a really easy way to just put in anything they want, do whatever they want, and then this automatically can be displayed right on that uh, pay on that page right here. So it's pretty handy. All right, well that's going to cover this video, and uh, if you have any questions, we'll see you in the forums.